Buying a Titan is one of the stupidest purchasing decisions you could ever make. This model costs $650 and it doesn't even come with arms. Nani? If you want arms, each one is $82. That's a total of $814 and this is the smallest and cheapest Titan that Forge World even sells. The Warhound Titan, or the Poor Hound Titan, towers over the battlefield at 10 and a half inches tall. For comparison, just $200 gets you a perfect grade Gundam that is the same size and has well over a thousand parts. And it's all plastic. So if you just ruined you and your children's financial future with the purchase of a box of miscast resin, you will want to at least make it look cool. Nothing is more peak neckbeard than spending almost a grand and having a model that's falling apart and badly painted. Well, I'm poor, so instead of buying a brand new kit from Forge World, I picked up this eBay Rescue Warhound for only $150. He came in pretty rough shape, but after some TLC, here's what he looks like. So the paint job is pretty rough. So. I'm going to start all over and repaint this puppy to join my Legio Ignata Manifold, which also has some other eBay rescues. Legio Ignatum is one of the OG Titan Legions and was part of the Triad Ferrum Morgulis on Mars. Unlike their traitor brothers from the Legio Mortis, the Legio Ignatum stayed loyal to the Imperium and the Emperor of Mankind. The Legio Ignatum has one of the coolest paint schemes and definitely the coolest out of the three Martian Legions. So Legio Tempestus, the third, last, and most inferior of this triad looks stupid. Like how is this oceanic ass camo even supposed to work on Mars? Ignatum is red, black, and yellow, and their low gothic, or normal English name, is the Fire Wasp. So they have some cool iconography, like this hornet looking thing, some honeycomb design, because Martians in the future don't know the difference between a bee and a wasp. And they have some super cool spiky hazard stripes. The Iron Warriors have no drip compared to the Legio Ignatum. Okay, actually the entire reason I chose Legio Ignatum is because their paint scheme matches my car. Every single one of these Titans is named after a type of Dodge Challenger. Uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce their names, so I'll just put them up on the screen here. Okay, rant over, it is time to start painting. The existing paint job on this model is pretty terrible, but luckily it's really not too thick. I only budgeted myself one day to get the painting done, so no time for stripping. I just primer directly over the model with black primer. So I laid the model down on its face first to get the back, and then flipped it over to spray the front, and finally I stood it up to get the rest of the spots. So I did want a glossy black base coat to help with the metals on the next step, but I've never found a glossy black primer in a can that actually works, so I'm just spraying the gloss varnish over the black primer. And no, the primer is not yet dry, you can just, just go. Apparently the can says to wait overnight before painting, but I can't read anyways, so 10 minutes later, it is time to start painting. I started with the skeleton first, and I'm using a dark gunmetal color. Being lazy really helps at this step. I just airbrush from the top and directly on the sides. Uh, no need to flip the model over or anything. Anything that you can't reach with the airbrush is just a shadow. And this step only takes about two minutes per model. Now, time to highlight the metal. I took a lighter silver, and this one is going to be the highlight and the forward points on the guns just to break up the darker metal color. You don't need to think too hard on this step, just put it anywhere you think will make the model more interesting. This step also only takes a minute or two also. So with less than 5 minutes of actual painting, it already looks like the Warhound is halfway done. The next step is to block back in the armor panels with black so we can add more colors. So I'm using Vallejo black primer but any uh, black airbrush primer works for this. So the right way to paint this model would be to leave the armor panels off so that you don't have to do this step and you don't have to worry about overspray later. But this model is already glued together when I got it, so no need to break it more. 
The Legio in Autumn has the iconic dark red on their armor, and I'm going to paint that next. So first I broke off the shin plates to make the hexagon effect. I had Rachel design a hexagon stencil on the computer, and we used a shop cutter to make a masking sheet. If you want one of these sheets, we'll have them for sale on our website, www.senseiswagminiart.com. If it's not up by the time this video is out, just email us from the contact form on the site and we'll get you hooked up. Make sure to line the stencil up straight, otherwise it will look weird. I'm using the point armor decoration and the big rivets to make sure everything is lined up. To sell the effect without making it too bright, I'm going to fade this color onto the existing primer to make it look darker. The first dark red is more like a mid-tone and not really a dark tone. On the shin guards, I'm focusing the light on the center top of the piece and fading it out into a circular shape. On the head, I blend the paint onto the two little forehead bumps and I'm fading it downwards on the side of the face. So there's really no right place to put the highlights since I'm going for a more hyper-realistic lighting method instead of making it actually look realistic. This way the model looks interesting from every angle instead of just looking correct from one viewing angle. So I'm trying to get good footage of the model for the video, but it's really hard to paint such a large model this way. Here's the actual correct Sensei Swag approved method for painting a Titan. You just hold it like a little baby puppy instead of trying to paint it while it's on the table. Next, I highlighted the red with a mid-tone red. This should be faded about 50% onto the dark red from the last step. This is more of a highlight than a mid-tone. On the shin, I just make the circular pattern smaller and on the head, it's really just the tip of the forehead bits that get painted. For the rest of the armor, I continue to blend the same direction as the last step. Some of the parts don't really have an obvious high point, so I just left those alone. Finally, the light highlight is just orange. This will make the dark red really pop, and you just want to use a tiny, tiny amount just to get the highest highlight. So on the shins, the orange is just a small dot in the top center by the gothic armor decoration piece. Don't worry that the orange is drastically different than the two reds, that'll be fixed in the next step. Now you can remove the masking from the shin guard and see the honeycomb lines. On some of my titans, I blended the red to yellow, like you see on some of the Ignatum art, but I thought this would make it a little too busy on this model, especially with what I planned for the top of the carapace. If you want the faded effect over the hexes, like on my Warlord Titan, just blend the colors closer together with orange being the mid-tone so that you can add yellow later on. And I probably should have done this before removing the masking, but to get all the red to blend together, I use a red filter. This filter is made by thinning down transparent red about 20% with 80% thinner. I airbrushed this on in super thin layers with a little bit more focus in the shadows. This will bring the orange down to the highlighted red and the black up to a very dark red. Basically, I want to get all of the colors in the same spectrum, I guess. It's kind of hard to explain, but you can see the effect. So basically, all of the colors are the same shade of red. Then I painted the black. Some of the Titans in the manifold have black armor panels or black helmets, but for this one, the black would just be part of the spiky hazard stripes. It still needs to be highlighted, and I did this with a dark blue gray. And one more highlight on the black, this time I'm using a medium blue gray, just to get that sheen effect. It's a tiny line on the sharpest point of the reflection. This next step, if you choose to do it, will be the hardest part. Before I started, I needed a beer to calm my nerves since this can be very frustrating. Non-alcoholic beer, of course, this time because me and my girlfriend just broke up and I'm hitting the gym and I want to get the gains, so no, no real alcohol for a while. I'm using another one of our stencils to get the hazard stripes. This is the longest step of painting the entire Titan, I think and you'll usually have to start over one or two or three times. Basically, just try to line up the sides evenly and put the tape down, and then put another piece to line up to the first one, and put a third one, and peel off the one in between, and keep going until everything is done. 
To make this easier, you can just do half of the carapace in spiky hazard stripes, or you can practice on an easier part like the knee pad of a larger titan. Luckily, this only ended up taking 20 minutes for me, which is a record since sometimes it takes over an hour. Again, you can get this stencil from our shop at www.senseiswagminiart.com. The stencil sheet will have both the hexes and the stripes. Now to paint the yellow. First, I started out with a light brown to give the yellow a warm undertone. If you want a cool undertone, I would recommend you use purple. I'm not sure if undertone is the correct word, but use brown if you want a warm yellow, purple if you want it cool. Uh, no technique here, just cover everything. Next is orange. So the yellow doesn't cover very well over the brown, so the orange will just give it another layer of depth. This is airbrushed on like 80 to 90% of the brown with just a tiny bit left in the darker shadows. I will be tinting this color just like I did for the red, so I'm more focused on the transition from dark to light rather than the colors themselves blending, if that makes sense. Then onto the yellow. This goes on the majority of the orange with just a little bit remaining. Again, I'm not concerned with the colors transitioning, just want to get a good darker to lighter blend. And this might take two or three thin coats. You can spray this on a panel and then move on to another panel and come back to the first one. I chose a more ochre yellow so it looks a little bit more natural. I want to avoid the highlighter look of a normal yellow paint since this is a military vehicle. Then I use a bone or a sand color to add that brightest sheen to the yellow. Same as on the black, just a very small thin line. Finally, I filtered the yellow down like I did on the red. Transparent yellow with thinner, sprayed in very thin coats. This will get the orange and brown to look like the shadow of the yellow color instead of just being orange and brown. This step will only take a minute or so, but it really helps make the model look less painted and more realistic. Time to remove the masking tape and hopefully you didn't fuck up by getting the spray underneath. If you do get some, it's okay. You can correct it for brush or just add weathering on top, like I will later. At this point, the Titan is looking pretty good. If you did get too much paint underneath the tape, or if your lines are crooked, well, it's time to cry because you'll have to primer it black and repeat the last eight steps. Probably practice on some cardstock first. So decal time. I'm using a mix of out of production four fill decal sheets, the sheets from the Adeptus Titanicus one, and a big custom decal that we made in the studio by scanning in some art from the book, scaling it correctly on Photoshop, and printing it on decal paper. I've gone over decals a few times already, and if you need a tutorial, go look at the house Tyrannus painting video. Next up is the trim. The first time you do this on a Titan, it'll feel like, well, forever, since you've probably only painted shoulder pads on an Ultra Moon before. I've painted about 200 Titans, so this part is pretty quick. It's just muscle memory for me. I think I have the process down to about 20 minutes per model or less. I'm using black since Legio Ignatum's paint scheme has changed from gold to black in the latest Titanicus book. I think the blackout scheme is actually pretty cool and it really stands out next to the other legios that use some form of gunmetal, silver, gold, bronze, or copper. You can use a paint pen if your brush skills aren't there yet. I find the brush a little bit faster but do whatever works for you. Make sure to thin your paint down because globby trim will really stand out like a sore thumb on this model. Just some small details to go. I'm using copper to paint the little nubbins on the joints and the void shields. Uh, I would recommend you use Pro Acros Copper since it's the only one that covers with one coat. I'm using an airbrush copper paint and it is taking me a few coats because Rachel stole the Pro Acro Copper. I really just need to get more of that in the studio. I also painted the eagle on the shin plate in a gunmetal and the scrolls in a bone color but I forgot to record the last part. 
Okay, well, the Titan is done. If you don't want weathering, stop here. Your factory fresh god engine is ready for the tabletop. I'm going to dirty mine up so they match with my house turnus knights. I do have a tutorial on the house turnus knights, which is a few videos ago if you want a simplified version of this paint scheme. To start the weathering, I dipped a sponge in black brown paint. I dabbed this onto a paper towel until barely any paint was showing up and I had a nice random chipping pattern. I put this randomly on the model to simulate the paint chipping from shrapnel or just random battlefield debris. Since these titans are charging through half blocks to get at the enemy, they will have some damage that just isn't on the feet. This color goes all over the red and yellow, but if you get onto some of the other colors, it really shouldn't matter. Next, I'm doing the same thing but with gunmetal. So the brown from the last step simulates older rusted chips, while this one is more recent battle damage that is fresher. With weathering, it always looks more convincing to tell a story with multiple layers of damage. So these chips are not old enough to be rusted, but are more recent but aren't so fresh because they will be covered in dirt and dust and grime. This color goes on all of the armor, including the trim. Time for my favorite streaking grime. I'm using a dark one uh, for this scheme rather than the usual streaking grime and I thinned it down with about 50% Gamsol. I do have a better explanation of this technique in the House Tyrannus and Deathcore painting videos along with some safety stuff and alternatives but just use Gamsol and use a mask. So I sprayed this all over the model. Everything is covered and don't worry about not being able to see the colors underneath since 90% of this will be removed. And time to do some skateboarding while this paint is drying. So you can wait a few hours or overnight depending on how weathered you want the model to be. I came back about an hour later and the paint is still too wet and I just used a blow dryer to expedite the process. You don't want to blow dry it right away since you'll just be pushing the wet paint around so wait a little bit first. Now that the shrieking grime is dry enough, it is time to remove the majority of it. I'm using a makeup sponge for this, but q-tips or small rags will also work. If the paint isn't coming off easily, soak whatever instrument you decided to use with Gamsol to get the really stubborn spots. I'm using the sponge deliberately going down on every stroke to leave the shrieking effects like dirty rain coming down the side of the Titan. This micro detail really helps show the scale of the Titan. And you can remove as much or as little of the shrieking grime as you want. The shrieking grime will take a day or two to fully dry and it's 1.30 a.m. right now and I want to finish painting before I go to bed. If you want to keep working, take the model outside and spray it with varnish and let the shrieking grime cure underneath while you continue to add paint on top. Uh, you do have to wait a little bit before you do this because if you do it too soon, and depending on what kind of varnish you're using, it might react with streaking grime, so... Yeah, well, it's pretty late now, and I decided just to do the base and let it dry while I slept and finish up the model in the morning. First, I glued a small ruin on the base just to really show the scale of the Titan. I'm using my own mixture that replicates sterling mud. You could be a baller and use actual sterling mud, but... A certain workshop hates this one simple trick. I made my own swag mud, which is just sand, paint, and glue. It doesn't make sense to put glue on the base, then sand it, and paint it, or pay $8 for sterling mud, but you can just mix all the ingredients together and do it in one step. The last step for today was to add some slate onto the base and let it dry into the paint. I used three different sizes, starting from the largest. Each step downwards gets a little bit more material. Well, it's the morning now and it is time to bring some life back into the model. So the model right now is kind of a monotone brown from the streaking grime and I want the metal to, and the trim to really pop and add another dimension of weathering so I'm dry brushing silver over the skeleton. This makes the edges of the metal look distressed and it really helps the details pop out. I use the same silver to lightly distress the black trim to really accentuate it. You can also dry brush some of the metal chips onto the armor and it's just more weathering. Finally, I use the same silver to sponge a little bit on for the freshest chips. 
I did this on the armor as well as the trim and the skeleton. Now the Titan doesn't look like he just got dumped in mud and it looks a lot more 3D. I wanted to make the copper bits stand out a little bit more so I'm giving them a verdigris or a patina effect and for this I'm just mixing medium, thinner, water into a turquoise paint. If you want a more natural faded look you can use an oil paint but I wanted it to pop a little bit more so I'm using acrylic for this step. Two more small details and it's time to break out the airbrush again. I'm going to start with the barrel scorching. This is simulating a weapon barrel that got super super hot and it gives a focal point for the weapons that are just otherwise a long tube of metal. The first color is a medium brown which covers most of the surface area on the front of the weapon. About 50% of the medium brown is covered with dark brown. I'm trying to make sure the tip is the most scorched part. Finally, the very tip is just airbrushed with black. You could probably do this effect with dry brushing, but airbrushing is faster, and if you didn't clean your airbrush last night, like I never do, the extra dry paint particles splashing around really adds to the effect. Then it is time for the void shield. I wanted them to glow like they're overclocking to protect the Titan from incoming ordnance. The first color I used was a blue that covered most of the top of the shield. The second color is a sky blue, which is covered like the middle or the center of the shields. Finally, for the glow to really pop, I airbrush a tiny dot of white in the very center. You can do this with any color, not just blue. Just don't use the color that is the predominant color of your Titan. So if your Titan is blue already, use purple or green. Now it's time to finish off the basing. Just like on the death core, I'm using pigments to make a more natural and less painted dirt look. I start with the lighter pigment color and I use a makeup brush to lightly tap the pigment all over the dirt and the feet of the Titan. Don't get the pigment too high up otherwise the Titan will look small. On a normal model, dirt up to the knees would make sense, but not really on a walker that is multiple stories tall. To add some variation to the ground, I use a second darker pigment color that I have about twice as much of as the previous color. Same thing, just load up a brush and tap it on the base and those sexy feet. If you have terrain or other debris on your base, get it all over those two to tie everything together. Finally, I use a large makeup brush to blend the two colors together. No art here, just attack the base with the largest brush you can find. Make sure you blend the pigment on the feet too. To seal it all in, I use Gamsol from a spray bottle. Make sure to soak everything so no pigment can come off later but don't use too much to where everything is running off the base. This will take a few hours to dry or you can just speed it up with a blow dryer. Here's a sped up version of the hair dryer so you can see the effect uh, of the gamsel after it is dry. To finish off the base, I'm just slapping some tufts on. These are just going around the base randomly wherever I think they look cool. And no Titan is complete without a name. This one will be named Melas Umbras in High Gothic. In Low Gothic, this is Black Ghost. This is actually just a bad combination of Ancient Greek and Latin, which is perfect for 40k names. Black Ghost is a special trim of the Dodge Challenger that I am too poor to afford, and it keeps the naming theme consistent with the rest of my army. Well, I can't freehand for shit, so I'm gonna have Rachel do it for me while I take over her airbrushing work. And that's it. The Titan is done. He's really come a long way from when I adopted him. Now that he has a proper paint job, the other Titans won't bully him anymore, and he can join the ranks of Legio Ignatum. Alright, I know you neckbeards are dying to ask where my Warbringer Titan is, but I don't have one. Honestly, I think- It looks like a Warlord Titan that was dropped on its head too many times as a child. I already do have one for my Legio Storm army and it looks really stupid, and I'm not gonna be getting another one. All right, next video coming out soon. We have more Titans, and more Titans, but this time Eldar, an Imperial Navy wing, some Custodes, and a few more projects, but I'm not sure exactly what order we plan to paint everything. Uh, thanks for watching, bye.